Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. We're back in Foundry VTT and in this video we are continuing uh, development of the Fandelva and Below, the Shattered Obelisk adventure series. In the last video we finished off Thunder Tree, uh, which means for this section we've only got one significant thing to do, which is Cragmore Castle itself. So let's crack on and do that. Uh, so I've made an executive decision um, <laughs> uh, regarding the map on this one. Um, and I just let me go to here and I want to upload I want to be going for I'm going to use let me just bring it up I'm going to be using this map this is the Forgotten Adventures version free version that you can go and download uh, this is their version of the map for this um, and it's what I'm going to use um, it's it's close enough to the original uh, I have got the player's version from the module as well, but I decided I'm going to go with this one. Um, why not? I think it's very pretty. It's nice. I like it. Um, so first thing we need to do is get that grid sorted out. Now we have got background scalar still on here. Uh, oh, I've made that really difficult by not being able to see me see my things now. Hang on a second. Hang on. Don't want to do that. Um, so let's go back to configure. I'm going to change the grid to blue right so I've now inadvertently got double the size that's fine in fact there might be an easier way to do it to actually the grid size of 50 okay that's ah right okay gone the wrong way configure if I do that 200 look at that that's pretty much spot on I didn't actually have to scale it it automatically lined up by pure coincidence, it's not because I'm a genius or any <laughs> ridiculous thing for me to say. <laughs> Clearly, it's not anything I did. <laughs> just lined up beautifully, so all I needed to do was just uh, say that that grid was 200 pixels, and that has worked very nicely for us. Okay, so on the basics, navigation, happy with that. That's all good. Um, I want to bring in, I want to make sure my initial view is centered here. That's fine, happy with that. Um, grid we've done I want to make the uh, the, the viewable group sorry the um, want to make the foundry grid transparent so we're not looking at that blue grid we can just see the faint grid on the map that's fine um, I don't need all this padding around it we'll shrink that a bit padding's this gray area around if I save changes um, you can see this this box around here I don't need that to be very large um, you can use it for keeping like characters and NPCs and things just in the sidebar ready to bring on. I don't use it very much, so I don't need that to be very large at all. So I can shrink that down. All right, lighting wise, token vision, absolutely. Fog exploration, absolutely. Uh, this is going to be globally illuminated. Um, it's, a, it's a ruined castle, so even when they're inside in rooms, there's holes in the roof and, and all sorts of things like that. So I'm not worried about them. Um, having to use torches and stuff to explore here. There's plenty of places where they do need to do that. Uh, so lighting like that. Ambience. Um, I don't have anything I need here for ambience at this point. That's fine. Save changes. All right. So um, we, we're kind of good to go. We can kind of crack on here. So I do want to make sure I'm going to the journal under Fandelva. Under the uh, spider's web here, I want to create a new one for Cragmore Castle uh, and because of the wonderful way that we can now use the journal I only need one journal per page contains all the information I need contains all the information the players need and I just share the individual bits so I'm going to start off by misspelling stuff let's put the castle entrance in map location uh, and this is C1. I don't know why I'm bothering with the C for castle. It's the all C's here. I could just call it one. That's fine. Okay, so let's get that in. Bosh, save. Brilliant. And that is down this area here. Oh, that's tiny, isn't it? Uh, that's because I changed the... Uh... There we go. All right, excellent. So we can start off with that. Now, the actual adventure starts off... Um, have we got any... Yeah, we don't really have any kind of description from the outside that we need to worry about, which is good. Um, 
Yep, so I don't need to copy and paste that. We can just crack on with some of these locations and get them sorted. So let's uh, let's do like we did before, and let's just get a whole bunch of them done. So trapped hall, map location, map location two. Yeah, I'm learning. I don't need to put that in, so I won't. Uh, and that is this bit here. And we are going to have a trap. So we're going to have to sort of trap out on this one, which is nice. Um, and in fact, that trap is going to be a trap that we've already done, a pit trap, and we're just going to modify it um, because it's going to function very similar. So we're just going to use what we've already got, modify it, lovely jubbly, easy peasy. Uh, next one we want is the Archer Post. Again, map location. Now the interesting thing about the Archer Post, number three, is that there are two of them. So we should be able to go Archer Post there. Let's make that bigger and Archer Post here. So we can use the same map note for both of these. They're both very similar. Um, we just need to decide whether we're happy with it, that those are big enough. I think, yeah, they're big enough. They stand out nice and easy. I can see them. Okay, we'll do a few more and then we'll fill it in some uh, adventure pieces. So this is the ruined uh, quarters. double check and make sure I'm spelling everything correctly because you know you lot will I'm sure you would let me know in the most positive and supportive way that you can <laughs> number five is the storeroom so number five uh, and the storeroom is actually this one up here Okay, we'll just make that map note bigger. Uh, and then we've got number six, of course, which is the Hobgoblin Quarters. And this is why it's so important that the characters, the players, can't see <laughs> the, the map locations. Hobgoblin Quarters, shove that up there. Just make that a bit bigger. Lovely. Um, why is... Oh, it's because I had it. I wonder why that one had a red thing around it. It's because it was still selected. Okay, so we've got, got this. This first half is sort of done, isn't it? Um, so rather than uh, pressing on and doing the rest of it, I think we we'll just do one more. Just do the dining hall down here, um, or rather, it's the the banquet hall, banquest hall. <laughs> Have I spelled that correctly? I have. Yes, good. <laughs> Okay, and number that's number seven. Okay, we do the banquet hall down here. Lovely. All right, so we just do those for the moment. Okay, uh, and the idea, hopefully, in this video, we'll get all of those done, and then in the next video, we can do a whole bunch of the other bits and hopefully get it finished off. Right, so this uh, castle entrance. Then let's um, let's edit this and get rid of that C because uh, just keep it, you know. Um, keep everything the same. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, make that bold because that's the bit we're reading out. And then we can just literally copy and paste. And again, Control Shift V, so we get rid of any of that formatting. Uh, so the main gates between C1, uh, sorry, uh, the, the main gates between areas C1 and 2 are made of bronze covered wood. Um, no monsters well here, but the goblins sentries in area three. So, careful what I'm highlighting. Um, and we should be able to drop arch post in there. Are supposed to be keeping watch. They glance only occasionally through the arrow slits, however. So, characters make a dexterity stealth check. Um, the lowest check is DC with goblins wisdom. Okay, I'm not going to worry about changing that into a roll because it depends what the players do that's just a standard stealth check to see if they get seen so that's easy uh, this development bit might be useful and important i'm just going to put a, a line here just to separate them out uh, if the goblins spot the characters they shoot arrows through the slits however they can't fire directly at enemies who have reached or gone past a broken gate correct so once they are in past here um, however, the, da, 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 the goblins also shout an alert to their comrades in area C4, so down here, and C6. 
So if the characters basically try to come in the front door and get spotted, it is going to kick off in a big way. All right. Uh, that's it for that area. Good. Uh, the trapped hall. Let's do that next. So edit again. Uh, just want to bring in the description first. There we go. Make that bold. Stick my line in. And then I'm literally game copying and pasting directly from the module for this. Uh, 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 so, again, so if the alarm has been raised and the goblins and hobgoblins from areas C4 and area C6, uh, run through the north and south. Let's just save that, make sure that worked okay. Yep, good. Um, run through north and south doors at the same time. They attack from both directions, trying to overwhelm. Cut, uh, okay, easy peasy. It's a very standard bit. And then here is our trap that we're going to do. Okay, so let's, let's bold that. Uh, and again, let's try and read what this actually reckons. So uh, the dusty past and rubble before the door uh, leading to area eight. So that's uh, to this area here. So we're talking about this section just here. Um, and it's a tripwire. So spotting the tripwire requires a search of the area and a successful DC 20 wisdom perception check. Once spotted, the tripwire is easily avoided and disarmed. No ability check required. Uh, any creature that walks through the rubble without avoiding the tripwire triggers a cave-in from the wooden beams and heavy stones. Right, so this is where we want to put trap triggers in. So first of all, a successful DC 20. So let's do successful uh, skill check using the ability wisdom and the skill is e equals, thank you, perception with the DC 20. Once spotted, it's easily avoided um, and disarmed. No check required. It's literally just to snip the, the, the trip wire, the piece of string, whatever it is. Okay, so that's good. Any creature walking over it. Um, any creature in the area. Da, 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 da. So what we want then is a trap trigger of some description here. Let's just close that for the moment. If we go to our prefabs, we have a pit trap that we used before. Okay, so I've already got this. This already exists. Now, I don't want to be using the um, this graphic, okay, because it's not a pit. But we've already got this all set up. So I'm going to close the journal for a moment. Just remind ourselves what we did with this and how this worked for us. Just double-clicking on it. Um, so effectively, it's an actor. Um, and we've got all of those things for it. If I go to the uh, tiles, it was a tile, wasn't it? Uh, yes, select. So this is the tile. Uh, it wasn't an over, wasn't an overhead. So hang on, sorry. Right, I want to change the image. Let's change the image. What can we find that is going to be better for us than that? Uh, icons. Are we going to be able to find something in the environment? Well, they've actually got traps here. Um, steel jaws, spiked wall, pressure plate, net. Okay, no. Don't want any of those, I don't think. Um, wilderness, altar, cave entrance. Mine exterior portal, terrain rocks brown possibly. Let's have a look at those. That's not right. <laughs> That's not right at all, is it? <laughs> uh, well, just rocky ground. Yeah, we we could use that. We could use that for the moment. I but we'll find something better. I mean, to be honest, I'm not even sure we need anything. I could just make it completely transparent. 
Because it's going to be stuff falls and then job done, isn't it? So I think I might do that. Why is it that it's slightly yellow tinted? That's fine. I'll leave it like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. We can come back and change it if we don't like it. Uh, I wonder how many of you are screaming at the screen again. That's bloody horrible. Um, okay, overhead. It's not. We don't need to worry about overhead. We don't need to worry about anima animation. It's the triggers here. All right, so this is the bit. So we set up this as a trigger um, for uh, all tokens um, controlled by anybody when they enter this area. Okay, so with the way I've got this, they can come ev either way they come into this area, any direction as soon as they get here. So I will change the size of this, I think, because it's not supposed to be it's supposed to be a tripwire rather than anything else. Um, I might make it a bit smaller. Okay, when uh, allow when paused, doesn't matter because characters won't be moving if it's paused. Trigger using image instead of border, don't really care. Um, must have sight to trigger, not relevant. Once per token, yeah, that's fine. Um, I think certainly once per token, that's fine. Actions. So this is where we put the actions in. We wanted it to show this tile, perhaps not relevant, pause the game, and then this is where it was asking for the checks and stuff. So just reading from the module what happens if they set this off. Uh, any creature who walks through the middle of the rubble without avoiding the tripwire, so basically if they don't search the area, um, triggers a cave-in of wooden beams and heavy stones. The area of the collapsed uh, uh the area of the collapse is marked on the map uh, any creature in the area must succeed in a dc 10 dexterity saving throw so let's edit this okay and this is a dexterity saving throw that we want the request roll saving throw dexterity uh dc 10 and we need to change what this word says. Your foot presses against a thin wire. Uh, against a thin wire and suddenly the unstable roof tumbles toward you. There we go. We can leave it at that. Public roll, bypass dialogue, auto roll. That's all fine. Continue with tokens that fail it. Okay, that's good. So we don't need we don't need to show the tile. We don't need to pause the game. We can just do straight away. It's going to force them to make a dexterity check if they didn't know about it. Um, do we want to play a sound file? I haven't got a sound file at the moment. I will. <laughs> I don't think you guys have heard the sound file I got attached to this. I'll show you in a minute. Um, it will play the sound file, which might be worth leaving. Um, and it's going to injure them. So hurt, heal, the triggering token. And they want this to be 2d10 bludgeoning damage. Okay. Um Da, 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 da. public roll show dice yep absolutely fine bosh okay and then deactivate this tile so once it's triggered it's triggered okay let's save that so this is our trap um let's bring out a player it's always going to be Haley, of course it is so in theory if Haley walks into this area now it should do that Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the wheel high helm scream. <laughs> I put that in for the pit trap. It's like if they fail it, and they fall down. Okay, so this has asked Haley for her saving throw um, against the DC ten. Uh, it doesn't always work beautifully when um, with the DM's controlling it, um, but it has deactivated the tile for us. Uh, so. It didn't actually roll at all for Haley, did it? Or did it? Has it just not shown it? Oh, I see, because it wants to know if it's with advantage or not. 
Hmm. Why is that not... And again, it might purely be... Might purely be because... Let me make sure this is activated again. Uh, da, 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 da. Set up it. Right, make it active. That's our actions. It should... Oh, uh, hang on a second. So what I really wanted to do... Continue if... Right, okay. Continue with tokens that fail. Continue if any fail. Because what I want it to do is I want it to stop and wait for that roll. And it didn't do it. Okay, let's see if that improves things. Come on, Haley. No, it didn't do anything. Did I forget to set it as active? It's active. Oh, no, I've broken it, haven't I? Is it continuing anyway? Um, how about we don't auto-roll? Why has it stopped working? Is it because I said once per token she's already triggered it once? That might be what it was. Right. There we go. Okay, so it's now paused, waiting for Haley to make her roll. Disadvantage for her. Perfect. There we go. That's better, right? <laughs> oh, dear. We haven't done an awful lot of stuff with traps, so it's a little bit um, in tile triggers, so uh, these little bits are a little bit fiddly. So there we go. That works fine. Not a problem. It paused, waited for Haley to make her dexterity throw. Um, it didn't pause the game, though, and I might actually add that back in. I think I will add that back in to make sure it pauses while Haley deals with that particular thing going on. So uh, I'm going to add back in, uh, and I think it was literally pause game, wasn't it, or something? Uh, pause game. There we go. I set it to pause. And I don't want that at the bottom. I want it at the top. I can literally just drag it at the up to the top there. Okay, so when she triggers it, it should pause the game, wait for Haley to make her roll, and then we can carry on. And then it will deactivate the tile. So once it's gone off, it's gone off. Um, so, of course, I need to just make sure I manually reactivate that ready for the next time. Sorry, Haley. Uh, and regardless of where Haley's damage come from, because she's under 50% health, we've now got that it will trigger to say that she's uh, wounded, which is quite nice. And it will do that for monsters as well. All right. Got that sorted. Bearing in mind this is completely transparent. Characters will not be able to see that. It's only because we're in DM mode. Whew, okay, that took longer than it should have done, didn't it? But this is why we're here. Look back into Cragmore Castle. Um, the trapped hallway, we finished everything we needed to do there. Um, it does actually say in here about any creature that walks over it yes da, 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 da. we've automated that i don't need to put it in here the noise of the collapse puts areas uh, creatures in areas three seven eight and nine on alert so that's going to be a bit of a nightmare for everybody all right so the archer post them let's crack on uh copy and paste job from the module and just, just so you know before i actually run this module i will for, or rather for each group before I run this module. I do tend to go through these things um, and just update any of the descriptions and stuff because not every not everything suits every group. Um, so the main defense is secret location, uh, appears to have been abandoned. In addition, King Roll Post Sentries, yep, each of these two rooms, so this is number threes we're talking about, um, two goblins, bosses, armed with short bows so we need some monsters um monsters humanoids now we've got goblins yeah we've got goblins we haven't got goblin bosses specifically now are they just a straight from the monster thing see they're not okay that's fine let's go back to our monsters we're going to take our goblin we're going to duplicate him 
we're going to double click and open our goblin we're going to call him whoops a goblin boss so it just means he's going to be a little bit tougher um, and just in the other window I've got the uh, the goblin boss variant um, we just want to update he's <laughs> not got strength 20 don't want to do that uh, so 20 14 10 10 8 and 10 so they're a little bit tougher uh, armor class of 17 because they are wearing uh, don't want to get rid of that I want to give them chain mail so while this is a pain of course we're only doing this once once we've got goblin bosses set up they're set up so chain mail and a shield um, that's interesting it says they should be armor class 17 as 18 because this is oh it should be chain shirt that makes, <laughs> that makes much more sense I can say blimey <laughs> how well off are these goblins okay um, they should have 21 hit points each tough tough little dudes um, movement of 30 feet armor class 17 that's all good what is there let's have a look at their things we've got decks yep dark vision we should have dark vision of 60 foot which is good common goblin they are actually a cr1 much tougher than a usual goblin proficiency bonus plus two they've got nimble escape we already saw that that was on there they are also let's get rid of that we want to look at monster features they have multi-attack um, and they use scimitar which is already on there and they have short bows um, they also have a thing called redirect attack yeah of course that's not a, a thing so when a creature the goblin can see targets it with an attack the goblin chooses another goblin within five feet of it the two goblins swap places and the chosen goblin becomes the target instead that's an interesting one, isn't it? Okay, so I'm going to add this in here. Um, that's going to be a feature. Let's edit this feature. Uh, we're just going to call it redirect attack. Now, the way I'm reading that is, <laughs> is if you're trying to attack one of these goblins, he will more than happily throw his mate <laughs> in the way instead. Okay, that's a save icon. I'm learning. I'm learning. Um, okay so we've got redirect attack in there so at least I can see that that's what they've got and of course I need to just refresh myself so we have a goblin boss um, do I need a new I am going to need a new so bear with me just a second because I'm just going to make sure that I've got a goblin boss picture um, and all I'm doing in the other screen where you can't see because it's really interesting for you to watch me do nothing um, is I was just downloading a copy of the uh, do, 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 did I put in characters yes there we go just a different one from the module so that's the icon we're going to use for the goblin bosses so that they're different um, get rid of that pull that across put you behind there we go we're going to use that instead for it all right so let's close that go back to our actors We've now got our uh, goblin boss and we can shove them out here. Right, just remind myself how many were there. So, um, each of the two rooms is occupied by two goblin bosses armed with short bows. Replace the goblin boss's normal javelin attack with the following attack options. Short bow, no, that's fine. So, we've got two of these in there. And two of them down here as well. There we go. That's uh, quite a lot of firepower when they will choose to use it. Right, good. That's part three, uh, section three done. The archer posts, nice and easy. Um, On to the ruined quarters. Uh, not sure how long this video has been going so far. I didn't take keep track of the time, which was very foolish of me. Just need to uh, save the archer post back there. Good. And then ruined quarters. We can update this one. So again, just copy and paste this in, make that bold. Again, 
purely my preference of how I like to do that. That was a bit weird. Mind you, there's so many things I do that are a bit weird, eh? <laughs> you guys are getting used to that. All right, so three goblins bunk here. This is area four down here. These are normal goblins. Um, Though the rubble appears dangerous, the tower is stable and the eastern passage is safe. That's this eastern passage just here that leads through to this dining hall. Uh, we have got a development here. So let's make sure we know what that is. Uh, any loud noises here attract the attentions of goblins in area 7. So the kitchen, well I'm not surprised, it's right next door. One goblin is sent through the twisting passage to investigate the disturbance. If he doesn't return in a round or two, or if he spots trouble and sounds the alarm, the other goblins come to investigate. So there's lots and lots of opportunity for the players to really mess up and just trigger whole goblin hordes here. So we need three goblins that are just going to be chilling out in this area here. Okay, just, just chilling out. I normally make them play dice or fight over you know scraps of food or something like that rather than just you know they're just hanging out all right let's do uh, area five and area six and then uh, we'll call an end to this particular video i don't want to create a new one uh, what do we want to do is edit, edit the storeroom this is yeah this is not particularly uh exciting area in many ways make that bold underline that that's good um, we've got two different things going on in here. Whoops, a daisy. There we go. Okay, so caravans raided by the Cragmores. We've got emboldening brandy. So while most of the casks are full of salted meat, one cask is filled with an exceptional dwarven brandy, which the goblins didn't notice because it was mixed in with junk. The cask contains the equivalent of 20 glasses, a character who Vibes, a glass of brandy receives one temporary hit point, but a character who drinks two glasses or more within one hour has a poisoned condition. Okay, so that's something that we have going to have to create that as a special item um, that has a certain amount of uses. Um, each use gives them one, but that's going to be quite difficult about the getting it to work out that oh hang on a minute you've taken two within a certain time limit that's going to be quite challenging we might not bother with that we might just say hey look you get one temporary hit point by having a glass of it um, you know, one temporary hit point is not brilliant is it um, but if you have another glass of it it doesn't help any further you only end up with that one temporary hit point so if they go and drink 10 glasses of it they've wasted half of it and they still only get the one temporary hit point I think that's what I would probably do. Um, something like it gives them a temporary hit point and one temporary hit point until the next short rest. Something like that. Um, but the other part of this is Sildar's gear, equipment piled among them. So, uh, nothing else of particular interest. We have, well, haven't put walls in and stuff yet. Must remember to do that. Um, Sildar's gear. Let's create a pile of stuff that includes Sildar's gear. I want to go to the items here. We are going to make a junk pile which is going to include uh, a bloody suit of chain mail. So I'm going to drop that in there. Yep, please. Short sword. Oh, hang on a minute. Let's open this up. Drag it in there, thank you. Short sword in a leather scabbard, a heavy crossbow. Dump that in there. Um, an unsheathed long sword. Dump that in there. Um, with the emblem of Neverwinter in its hilt, the chain mail and weapons belong to Sildar. Okay, that's fine. So, this is our pile of stuff. So let me get rid of that for a moment. And what we can do with this is we can actually make this a bit more um, specific. So this is bloodied chainmail rather than just normal chainmail. 
And in theory, that might um, get the guys to the players to kind of go, oh, hang on a minute, it's something special. Um, it was just a heavy crossbow. Um, the long sword emblem. Um, let's call it Neverwinter. Neverwinter long sword. Again, we just want to make that stand out slightly. That they go, hang on a minute, this is something, something slightly different, something slightly special. It's personalised. Um, it's worth exactly the same. So if they go and flog it, whatever, it makes no difference at all. But it might make them think that rather than selling it, this might actually belong to somebody. <laughs> Good, we can do that. There's no money in here. So um, configure the pile. It is just an item pile. That's fine. Um, scale it down slightly uh, enabled yes they need to be right next to it blah 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 delete when empty correct 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 update that item pile that's good um, close if I double click this let's change it to pile of gear There we go. And we can shove that in there. Um, and I think what I might do. So it should be easy for them to find that stuff. In fact, let's put it over here. Look, there's a blinking. So when they come in, you, they can actually see that on the map already, which is quite nice. So we can just have that hidden and just reveal it once they actually come in uh, and do a little search or anything. Okay, so the only thing we need to do is sort out that weird brandy stuff. I'm not even sure how valuable that is, to be honest, but it does add a bit of flavour, if you'll excuse the pun. Okay, let's do the help goblin quarters, and then I will work out how to do that item for the brandy stuff off camera. Um, just make sure that we can get that work. I will show you once I know. I just don't want you watching me for ages trying to fiddle out something quite silly. Hobgoblin quarters then. Just copy and pasting again for kicks and giggles. There it is. Make that bold, of course. Put a line under it. Um, and then just going to bring in, again, the rest of the descriptor stuff. Four hobgoblins are quartered in this room. So we need our hobgoblins. Let's go back over here. Have we got hobgoblins? I don't think we've got hobgoblins yet. We do not. So back to our good old SRD. Uh, oops. Monsters. Thank you. Hobgoblin. There they are. And that's the... Hang on a minute. And shove them over there. Thank you. No. <laughs> that's not what I wanted to do. Get rid of you. I'll take that hobgoblin and I'll dump it in my humanoids. Thank you very much. Right. I know you're all over the place. <laughs> so inept. All right. Bob. So what, what sometimes annoys me about modules is they're like, oh, yeah, there's four of them in there. And they're like, yeah, but what are they doing? <laughs> they're just hanging out, yeah? They're just doing nothing of interest. So four hobgoblins in, are quartered in this room. Um, because their neighbors always get into fights, they don't pay much attention to noises. Da, da, da. The Cragmores are a mixed group of goblinoids with a handful of bugbears lording over the larger numbers of miserable goblins and a few hobgoblins. The hobgoblins plan to dispose of the bugbears and take over someday, but for now the bugbears are too strong a threat. So we have got some treasure in here though. We like treasure. Not as much as the players do. Okay, so mounted to the walls are five spears for long swords three morning stars two great so let's um let's go create ourselves another pile uh don't want to be in there where do i want to be srd items there we go um so five spears get out and we're going to be dumping those over here it's going to be hello five spears we're going to create a new tile i'll sort out the tile in a moment um 
four long swords. Open the pile. There we go. Four long swords, two great swords. Two of those. I mean, that's a lot of stuff to carry if they want to. And how many quarter staffs? A, a quarter staff, just the one. Uh, none of the weapons are magical, but a quarter scarf engraved with stylized feathers. The quarter staff is surprisingly light and is worth 10 GP for the craftsmanship alone. Okay, so what we can do is we can literally update this. Not fathered. <laughs> Feathered, feathered quarter stuff. There we go. That's nice and easy. We've just managed to change that into a completely new, unique item just by doing that in the item pile, and they can carry that around with them. Um, so let's make sure we've updated that. Let's configure the pile. Do we need to do anything with it? Probably not. I think that's probably all good. Uh, other settings, scale the token. We might well do that. Just make it a little bit smaller. Didn't look like it made it much smaller at all, did it? We'll do it this way. Um, du -du 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 appearance. Let's make it one wide, two tall. Um, yep, and we can just. There we go. That's that's a bit better. In fact, making it bigger doesn't make any difference at all, does it? Because, of course, the image is only a certain size. Um, yeah, that's only scaling the image, of course. Silly boy. All right, let's keep it small. Oh, can I do these as a half? Oh, that's better. That's better. And then I can pop that in there. Good, and that's going to be really obvious. There's a whole weapon rack there. They're going to be able to see that. I'm just going to hide it for the moment until they say they're actually going to look. Um, all good. Right. So we have, we haven't done the banquet hall. We're not going to do that just yet. We've done the entrance, the trapped hall, the arch post, ruined quarters, storeroom, including putting out all the monsters. We have sorted out the trap here. We've put out some piles of stuff that they find. Um, the only thing we haven't done is the magical brandy stuff that I will need to have a little look at um, because that's a completely unique item. So uh, it might take a little bit longer to look at that. That's easy peasy though. Um, or rather, it sounds easy peasy. <laughs> Famous last words. Uh, and of course, what we haven't done is any of the walls around here that we definitely want to do. So um, I'm just going to do a few of these walls here on camera. Uh, and then I will let you lot go off and do something else because you don't need to watch me do walls. And that's going to be a window. So I'm going to keep that as a window here. And while this is all... Whoops, so Daisy, sorry about that. Uh, while this is all rubble and stuff like that, I am going to... Sorry got distracted so I'm going to concentrate um, yeah while this is all rubble and stuff like that it is effectively impassable so I want to make sure I put a wall in here actually take it right up and snap into there um, I now want to make sure that's a door join up with there I'm going to make sure nope I don't want to do that I don't want to do I certainly didn't want to do that I want to be putting another one in again just take that across there um, one across to here and make that doorway that's going to come across to be that door and then could just meet up with that like that you're going to come across there 
Easy peasy. All right, let's not get too carried away. Let's um, put these doors in. So just going to double click on each of them if you haven't seen us do this. Really, really easy. Um, these doors are going to be closed. Are they going to have a sound when they open? Wood creaky, absolutely. Door. Wood creaky will be fine. Door. Wood creaky. Now these are little arrow slits. So how do we want arrow slits to work? We want movement restriction, yes. Light restriction uh, limited. Sight restriction limited. Uh, sound restriction none. Wall direction. Well, we could have it. You, I mean, you know, arrow slit. I mean, you can look in arrow slits. But if we want to have them uh, like a bit higher up, what we could do is you could say actually you can only it's effectively a wall only in one direction let's leave it as it is for the moment um, there is also the proximity threshold attenuation so the distance that perception can penetrate this wall is adaptive relative to the observer's proximity and the activation threshold only applies when the threshold is defined so what that effectively means i know that sounds really complicated what that effectively means is characters outside for example here can't see in to that arrow slit unless they get really close to it so that's exactly the kind of thing we want to do i'm going to start the next video by doing that um, because that's something slightly different we haven't done uh, and i think that might be a, a useful tips video to do on its own um, and get that working um, i think that'll be a good idea so let's do this last door over here get rid of that and then we'll do those arrow slits as a separate thing uh, closed creaky yes okay so we've got quite a lot done in this one i'm going to leave this video here um, next video is probably going to be looking at those windows as a little tips video um, then i will probably fill in a whole bunch of these walls without you because there's only so much wall building you can do um, or watch rather before you get bored and fall asleep thank you very much guys you take care i'll see you in the next one